हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ द सेकंड चैप्टर दैट इज द अर्थ सिस्टम इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैड ऑलरेडी लर्न अबाउट द इंटीरियर ऑफ द अर्थ थ्योरी ऑफ आइसोस्टेसी थ्योरी ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंटल ड्रिफ्ट एंड द लास्ट टॉपिक हियर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द क्रस्टल मूवमेंट्स क्रस्टल मूवमेंट्स एंड देयर रिजल्टिंग फोल्डिंग एंड फॉल्टिंग एंड देयर टाइप्स हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट Crustal movements are the forces which are affecting Earth's crust involved in the creation, destruction, recreation, and maintenance of the relief features. These forces are responsible for change in surface of the Earth. Change is the law of nature that we all know. There are two types of changes. Long period changes are occurring slowly that even man cannot notice it during his lifetime. example folds and falls short period changes are occurring suddenly that it can notice within seconds or hours example volcanoes earthquakes landslide flash floods etc there are two types of forces endogenetic forces are basically coming from deep within the earth and affected by the immense pressure and temperature of the interior of the earth and the exogenetic forces are operating on the surface of the earth which are affected by running water which is known as fluvial action wind which is known as aeolian action ground water which is known as karst action and ocean water then glaciers means moving ice so these agents are affecting the surface of the earth that's why these are called as exogenetic forces now in this chapter or the in crustal movements topic we are taking emphasis on endogenetic forces only so this tree diagram is well explanatory about the endogenetic forces and their subsequent classifications the endogenetic forces are classified into two forces such as diastrophic forces or sudden forces sudden forces are classified into volcanoes and earthquakes whereas diastrophic are classified into epirogenic and orogenic epirogenic means formation of continents whereas orogenic means formation of mountains the word epiro means continents and genic means formation that's why the word has been formed the formation of continent means epirogenic and the word oro means mountains and genic means formation so the word orogenic means formation of mountains so in epirogenic movements there are vertical movements such as if the upward movement is there which is called as emergence and if the downward movement then it is called as a submergence and in orogenic movements there are horizontal as well as vertical movements if the ten tensional movements are there the crustal fracture cracking and faulting will occur and if the compressional or the convergence movements are there then the crustal bending wrapping and folding will occur so this is the uh, explanation about endogenetic forces so again there is some explanation about it endogenetic forces are coming from deep within the earth causes two types of movements horizontal and vertical these forces are responsible for building mountain and relief features on an average endogenetic forces are related to thermal conditions of the interior of the earth horizontal and vertical movements are caused by expansion and contraction of rocks due to variability of the temperature of interior of the earth endogenetic forces are divided into two types sudden forces and diastrophic forces as we discussed about it these forces are caused by sudden endogenetic forces and results are very quick such as earthquakes and volcano diastrophic forces and movements it includes the both horizontal and vertical movements these forces operates very slowly and their effects are visible after millions of years it affects mountains valleys plains lakes etc epirogenic movements are responsible for origin of continents they cause to subsidence and emergence of landforms whereas orogenic movements are caused by endogenetic forces in horizontal manner these are also called as tangential forces they are classified into two categories tensional forces if it is in opposite direction and the crustal bending if it is in a towards each other direction and what is mean by wrapping over here the crust crust mean the crustal part of the earth either raise or down 
when this process affects a large area then resultant mechanism is called as a wrapping so what is mean by fold actually the wave like bands are formed in the crust as or the crustal rock due to tangential compressive force resulting from horizontal movement caused by endogenetic forces originating deep within the earth such a bands are called as a folds so in this uh, topic we need to understand that there are some rocks which are having elastic properties or elastic type of minerals due to that they are having bands in it and due to tangential forces or compressional forces some rocks are getting bended like this okay so here we can have to uh, take an emphasis on this the some rocks or rock strata or rock layers are getting bended due to the compressional forces coming from both the sides and such a bends are called as a folds the upfolded rock strata in arc like form are called anticline so this crest type of this is called as anticline while the downfolded structure forming trough like feature is called syncline this feature is called as a syncline the plane which bisects the angle between anticline and syncline is called axis of fold or axial plane on the basis of anticline and syncline these axial planes are called axis of anticline or axis of syncline respectively the inclination of rock beds with respect to horizontal plane is called as a dip dip is the direction of maximum slope down a bedding plane it can be termed as a angle between maximum slope and horizontal plane the strike of an inclined bed is the direction of any horizontal line along bedding plane the direction of strike and dip is always perpendicular to each other so here are another two terminologies are used over here the dip 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 means the direction of slope from anticline to syncline and the strike means the direction of horizontal line which runs through the bedding plane and the direction of dip and strike is always perpendicular to each other the nature of fold is depending on several factors but mo mostly two important factors are mentioned over here the intensity and the type of compressive forces duration and the last one is duration of operation uh, operation of compressive forces okay so the rock type is also important intensity of force is also important and the duration is also important the elasticity of rock also affects the fold more elastic rock gets intense folding while rigid rock gets moderately fold difference in magnitude and intensity of forces are caused variations in characteristics of folds as we know if the rock is more rigid it gets uh, folded but it uh, the fold will break at a certain point but the minerals or the content of rock is more elastic then rock will get immensely uh, folded so that is the thing so this diagram is well explanatory about the uh, characteristics of folds see this crest like feature is known as a anticline this this one okay which is known as a anticline and this trough like feature is known as a syncline okay and there are two axes synclinal axis anticlinal axis and the plane which bisects these angles or angle uh, axis which is known as a axial plane over here i have mentioned another terminology way which is used over here is limb limb means the side of <coughs> fold if this is one side of the fold which is one limb this is another side of the limb which is known as a another limb okay so this is the terminology is regarding folds so again to understand the axial plane i have cut this diagram at the crystal part and here you can easily understand so this portion is known as a axial plane which bisects the angle between anticline and syncline okay so this is the axial plane now i have one animation for you how the folds are formed this is basic one we'll have a, another one so tangential forces are coming from both the sides and the folds are forming like this okay so this is the basic idea about the fold okay 
Now we are having certain types of folds on the basis of the angle of inclination. If the angle between two limbs is more than 90 degree, in this diagram I have mentioned over here, see this is one limb and this is another limb and the angle is more than 90 degree, then it is called as a open fold. Okay, fine. And vice versa, if we are having the angle between two limbs is more, less than 90 degree due to high compressional forces, then it is called as a closed fold. So these are basic two types of folds, open fold and closed fold. Then we are having another types of folds such as symmetrical fold. So here you can have a look on this. If we cut the fold at the crystal part, then we are having two uniform sides of the fold. So that's why which is called as a symmetrical fold. This is a simple type of folds. Limbs of folds are inclined uniformly. These are open folds. They formed when compressive forces work regularly and intensity is moderate. They rarely found in nature. Why rarely found? Because there is no uniformity in the nature actually. Symmetry in the universe. Okay. There is always a symmetrical type of things in the universe. So that's why the symmetrical fold cannot be found easily in the nature. Okay. Then asymmetrical fold, the name itself says they are characterized by unequal and irregular limbs. Both limbs are inclined at different angles. One limb is larger and having moderate inclination, while other limb is having shorter and steep inclinations. This is shorter limb and having uh, steep inclination, whereas this is the longer limb and having moderate inclination. So that's this and he, this side is having high compressional forces and this side is having moderate compressional forces. That's why this is having a symmetrical fold. The monoclinal fold is also type of asymmetrical fold. But here one thing you have noticed the one limb is almost perpendicular to the bedding plane at a 90 degree angle. That's why it is called as a monoclinal fold. Here one limb inclines moderately with regular slope and other limb inclines steeply at right angle and slope is almost vertical. They form due to unequal forces from both the sides. Okay. Then isoclinal fold. Isoclinal fold means bo both the limbs are almost getting vertical. They formed when the compressive forces are too strong that both the limbs become parallel to each other but they do not lying, lying horizontally. Means due to this compressional forces from uh, both the sides what is happening? These limbs are getting completely vertical. They are getting parallel to each other, but they are never lying on the bedding plane. This is what we called as a isoclinal fold. And now this is a recumbent fold, advanced stage of the fold. They formed when the compressive forces are too strong that the both the limbs are become parallel to each other and they are lying horizontally too. See here the both the limbs are, I'll draw the line. Both the limbs are getting parallel to each other and they are horizontal to the bedding plane as well. So that's why this is what we call as a recumbent fold. Uh, at the intense type of folding, at the last type of folding, they are getting collapsed down and that's why it is called as a recumbent fold. And the last uh, one uh, actually when the recumbent fold gets break, the nappies are appear. These are results of complex folding mechanism caused by intense horizontal movement and resultant compressive force. Due to further compressive forces on recumbent fold, one limb of the fold side slides forward and overrides the other limb. This process is called thrust and the plane along which fold is thrust is called thrust plane. When compressive forces become so intense that it crosses the limit of elasticity of rocks, it folds so acutely that it breaks the axis of fold and lower strata become upward, therefore resultant structure become reverse to normal structure. Due to continuous horizontal movement and compressive forces, the broken limb of the fold is gets away from its original position and overrides the rock beds at a distant place. This broken limb of fold is called nappies. So here you can see this diagram. This is the thrust, thrustal plane. What is happening over here? 
see this is the recumbent fold it has the limb has been collapsed down on the bedding plane and due to thrust this axis has been broken this axis has been broken at this place and what is happening some power portion is getting override to this part of bedding plane and some portion is getting thrusted under this limb so this kind of a, a complex mechanism is called as a nappies okay now these are the fold folds now we are going to discuss about the faults what are the faults and their types a surface along which rock body has broken and been displaced is known as a fault faults are fractures in the earth's crust along which slippage or displacement occur most of the faults are occur in grouping that is known as a fault zone or fracture zone faulting is characterized by displacement slipping motion along plane of breakage of fault plane the great horizontal extent of fault is known as a fault line and it can be several kilometers long faulting occurs in sudden slippage movements that generates earthquake now the parts of or characteristics of fault the plane along which rocks are displaced by tensional forces acting vertically and horizontally is known as a fault plane fault plane can be in the form of vertical horizontal or inclined fault dip the angle which fault plane makes with the vertical or horizontal plane is known as a fault dip and the fault strike means the term applied as the same as a bedding plane horizontal rock strata then like anticline and syncline in this uh, fault we are having upthrown side uppermost block of the fault is known as upthrown slide side and the downthrown side is having lowermost block of the fault and then we are having hanging wall upper wall of the fault foot wall lower wall of the fault fault scar like axial plane we are having fault scarp over here a cliff formed directly by the displacement of recent fault but usually on a small scale so see this diagram here you can easily understand see this is a strike like a strike in a, a fold as well and this is the direction which is known as a dip see the disc dip and this is hanging wall okay and this is foot wall okay so we here we are having instead of anticline and syncline we are having hanging wall and foot wall strike and dip as usual and this is a normal faulting uh, normal faulting means the uh, on the basis of gravity if the according to gravity one block is getting thrusted down and another block remains at it is at its own position so this is what we called as a normal faulting and this diagram is related to the normal faulting only okay so see this diagram and explanation about the normal fault this is also called as a tensional fault or gravity fault these faults are having vertical movement they occur when rocks are pulled apart in this type fault plane is very steep or almost vertical a normal fault results in steep straight cliff like features like as a fault scar okay so this is the fault scar here we have mentioned foot wall and the hanging wall this is the normal fault and the reverse fault is original block it's remain as it is but the one block is getting upward at side see this diagram explains with the bl this blue arrow one diagram uh, one block is moving towards upward this is also called as a thrust fault a reverse fault is one in which hanging wall is moved upward in relation to foot wall due to extreme compression one layer of rock pushed over the underlying layer that is upper side is displaced above to the fault plane okay so from the fault plane what is happening one rock is getting one block is getting upward at side that is a uh, reverse condition not normal condition like to the gravity that's why it is called as a reverse fault then we are having lateral fault or strike fault this is also called as a tear fault this type of fault formed when the rock blocks are displaced horizontally 
along fault plane it is the result of shear stress in the crust they are commonly produced where one tectonic plate slides past another transform at a transform boundary example saint andreas fault in california it is about 1200 km long okay so when the two blocks are moving apart from each other in this type of direction not vertically they are moving horizontally then it is called as a lateral fault then we are having step fault a normal type of fault only which is repeated by series of parallel faults each with increased throw in the same direction will produce stepped slope so step by step it is forming step slope and continuously having a normal type of fault in it then we are having hinge fault it forms where displacement increases from zero to maximum along the strike okay so what is mean by hinge basically we need to understand this word hinge means the part which joins the door to the frame we are having a frame for the door and the door and there is one part which joins the door to the frame and this is what we known as a hinge and due to hinge the door can be open and close like that okay so here also you can see in this portion one uh, tie uh, one side of the block of rock has been joined but another side has been displaced okay so this is type of a uh, fault which is known as a hinge fault okay so basically we had learned about the folds and faults folds are the uh, resulting into the compressional forces there are many folded mountains in the world like alps rockies andes himalayas these are recent mountains aravallis in the india in rajasthan these are olded mountains in the uh, series of folded mountains okay and there are certain uh, features of fault such as if i draw the features like this this is okay so if i draw the feature like this this one is known as horst sorry i'll draw with this horst this uppermost part is known as a horst whereas this is known as graben so on the screen my handwriting is not good so you should understand uh, consider this thing okay so the uppermost part in some mountains are having block type of mountains are there so uppermost part is known as a horst whereas the this synclinal type of the uh, feature which is known as a graben okay so these things uh, uh, i forgot to put the diagram for this so that's why i just drew over here i hope you understand these things okay fine uh, we'll meet in the next video okay thank you thank you